Welcome to this video on the use of kinetic data or rates data to validate reaction mechanisms. So there are our learning objectives, let's begin. So we're going to start by just introducing this using an example of a substitution reaction. Now the mechanism of a reaction is uh, defined here, the detailed process by which a chemical reaction takes place, usually given just as a series of equations describing the individual steps in the mechanism. Uh, these are known as either usually known as elementary steps or just steps for short. So let's show you an example of a reaction here. This is a substitution reaction. It could be a nucleophilic substitution at saturated carbon. It could be an electrophilic substitution uh, on a benzene ring or perhaps a ligand exchange reaction with a transition metal complex ion. Um, but one uh, mechanism you could come up with for this reaction is just that it all takes place in one step. So essentially the mechanism equation, you've just got one step and it's exactly the same as the full equation for the reaction. So in terms of an energy level diagram, what we'd expect you to see here, if this is the energy uh, as the reaction proceeds, so this is the reaction coordinate, then what we've got happening in this reaction is that we'd start with AB plus C. I'm going to say that it's exothermic. And we're going to have A plus BC down here. And what we've got happening in this reaction, there'll be an activation barrier and just a single energy barrier governed by a single activation energy for the reaction. So that's what we're saying is happening in this first mechanism. Now here's an alternative mechanism which is a two-step mechanism. So in this case we could say our first step here is going to be uh, A, B breaking apart essentially. So A plus B. Now sometimes this would involve ions but here I'm just making them neutral. And the second step would involve A staying the same and B is going to react with C to form BC. So if we sum the steps together just to check they do actually make up the whole mechanism because uh, the B's will cancel here and so we are going to indeed recover the full equation. Okay. Now I'm just going to leave the B's intact there now, how do you decide between these two mechanisms which one is correct for our reaction? So if I just illustrate this one, I can also use an energy level diagram just to show you what's going to happen. Energy, and this is the reaction coordinate. Now in this case here, I'm going to have an intermediate. This species here is going to be an intermediate, so I'm going to have A plus B forming there. It's usually, in this case, bond breaking has to take place, so it's going to be a high energy intermediate. This is going to be uh, A, B plus C, and so we're going to have a sing one energy barrier going to there, and then if this is going to be exothermic, we're going to have A plus B, C, then we're going to have another energy barrier going to there. So this is a two-step mechanism. Now, how do we actually validate? which of these two mechanisms is correct. Well one big powerful tool is using rates of reaction or kinetic data, finding the rate equation that would arise from these two mechanisms. So let's go back to the first one. Now the rate equation, uh, I've spent a lot of time on these videos trying to convince you that it's got nothing to do with the stoichiometry of the overall equation. However, if the reaction just takes place in a single elementary step, then we can just write the rate equation down. So for this reaction here we've got rate is equal to k times the concentration of AB times the concentration of C because both of these are going to actually affect the rate if it takes place using this mechanism. If either of these goes down then we'll expect the rate to go down and because they're reacting one to one they're both going to affect the rate equally. What about this mechanism here? Well it's actually quite difficult to say because clearly the concentration of AB is going to affect the formation of the intermediate, but then as the intermediate reacts with C, then its concentration is going to determine how fast this reaction can take place. So the relationship is actually quite complicated. Now you can analyze this using differential equations and come up with a rate law that way, but actually for the context of uh, things like A-level studies, then usually we can make a simplification if we judge that a certain step in the reaction will be much slower than the rest. This is known as a rate determining step or just RDS for short. So this is a slow rate determining step. And if you click the link now you can watch a lovely video that shows how if you do have one very slow step compared to the others in the reaction 
that you do essentially only go overall in the reaction as fast as that slow step. So do click the link now to watch that video. So, in the presence of a very slow step, the overall rate is just going to be the rate of the slow step. So in this case, because we've only got AB involved here, then the concentration of C isn't going to make a difference because the only way the reaction can get faster is if you have more AB producing more of the intermediate B, which means that that reacts with C. So in this case, the rate is going to be what we call uh, first order just with respect to A. This would be a unimolecular event in the rate determining step. So this is the rate law you'd get. And therefore, you can actually differentiate which of these two mechanisms is correct in a given case by looking to see whether there is any concentration dependence on C. So if we have this kind of mechanism here, a one step or sometimes known as a bimolecular mechanism, then <coughs> you would expect to see dependence on the concentration of C. If you don't see that, then the mechanism must be a two-step or a unimolecular mechanism.